G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now this kit I purchased about a year ago, the Revel HMS Bounty in 1110 scale. Now look, it, it's not bad, it was probably good in its day, but it's really getting long in the tooth now. And a lot of the moulding is very flashy and there's a lot of problems with the kit and there's tons of stuff missing, but it has heaps of potential. And so I scratch built a lot of parts and I corrected other parts and I also got my um, my daughter Jess to sew up some sails for me and then I rigged the whole thing with the correct lines and wooden pulleys and wow it has transformed this sort of ordinary kit into something I'm very proud of and we will show that at the end of this video I have finished this bounty roll the credits <laughs> So this is where I've got to with the bounty and I just thought I'd show you before I get on to the last of the rigging um, a look at the deck and how all the rigging's now filling in spaces and there's heaps of little belay points that are all tied up and they're looking very interesting. Everywhere there's just bits and pieces that um, I remember making and you know it's been a year's journey and I get as much of a kick out of looking at this as I'm sure that you will. I know a lot of you have been asking, we want to see some detail pics, we want to see... So here's a quick one. I'll, I'll do more photos and more detail at the end of the video, but I thought I'd just whet your appetite with showing you how it's all come together here and how it's looking now with all the rigging on it. All right, let's move up and I'll show you what I've been doing on the foremast. Since my last video, I've put the sails on the foremast. And I attached them the same way as I showed in that, using the slings to raise the yards and then tying them off with trusses and then aligning the sails with my lifts and um, getting in the sheet lines to hold the sail in place. That was all shown in my last video. If you haven't seen that, you need to go back and have a look at that one if you're interested. Now, I've also worked further now and I have added these great big long lines here. And they also then have pulleys or blocks you want to call them and they run down to the deck to the belay points down there and these are the braces and the braces allow you to pivot the yards for tacking so that you, you turn your yard into against the wind however you want and this allows you to basically sail against the wind or to sail across the wind all kinds of things because you just unlike the way I've rigged this ship you don't always want to sail with the wind or well, sometimes you just can't you know the wind's fickle. <laughs> so you often have to twist your mast around. Well, actually you twist the yards. Mast stays still. That's a one misgiving a lot of people think. I think the whole mast moves. No, it doesn't. The yard moves. And the yard moves because you pull on the braces. And the braces we pulled on one side and lessened on the other side. And therefore this yard will then pivot. And that will catch the wind. Anybody that's um, sailed a small you know, a little sailboat will know how you, you flick the boom around and you catch the wind and that's what you do. It's the same on these ships, except it's far more complicated because you've got lots of sails and lots of things going on. That's how you go. But anyhow, all those ropes are in there, so there's lots of them. But as I've explained all the way through my videos, there's really only half a dozen things and they're repeated. So there's a sling, there's a brace, okay? And those are in there and they just hold the yard to the mast. And then there are the lifts which just basically hold the um, yard level okay and then you've got sheets to pull down sails clear lines to lift up the sails when you don't need them and finally we have these braces these braces only have a short little line directly from the mast then they run the pulley and the pulley then has a couple of lines which is also acted on another pulley down to the deck and on the deck is where they will pull, they will let out, and that adjustment will move the yards. And they'll need to sort of move the yards pretty well in unison. And that will allow them to pivot, as I said, and then they can catch the wind and tack. All right. Lots of nautical terms, I know, lots of nautical terms. It steers the ship. Yeah, the rudder does a bit of work, I'll agree, but the wind is doing most of the work. So to steer the ship, you move the sails. I only have this last sail to rig and that's the gallant the top gallant here on my foremast okay and it's the highest sail that there is in this kit on that mast you can get a royal above that but the bounty didn't have that it really wasn't that big a ship 
it didn't need things like that. You know, much more important ships. <laughs> ships of the line, things like that, might have a royal, because they're royal ships, yes. Um, so this is basically as far up the mast as we're going to go, which is good. And this is it. This is all I've got to do. So after this, I've finished. <laughs> Look, I've already used the um, the the sling to... Um, it's, it's in there, you can hardly see it. By the time it's tied off, you can hardly see it. So the sling pulled up that um, yard, and then it basically tied off and... You know, it's just been invisible, but I know it's there. Uh, then there was a truss behind here that's held in place. They're really functional knots, and it doesn't matter, we can't see them. They have locked this in place. They have positioned the height, and then they've held it back. Oops, all the pokey thing. Held it back to the mast. So then that makes the rigging so much easier, because basically that's in place. But it can still pivot. It can tilt up and down. It can rotate around, which is good, because we want to get everything orientated. The um, sheet lines have been put in, although they're fairly loose at the moment. Um, that's not the sheet lines there. Those are the lifts from the sail below. But the sheet lines, you can hardly see them. They're, um, they're, they're there. I've got to billow, bend that sail out a bit more and adjust my sheets. The clue line I'm about to put in, so that clue line is basically going to run from a point here, um, down through this pulley, up through there and then down, down, down. As you go up, the rigging does get simpler. That's the beauty of the ships. As you go up, the lines get thinner, the blocks get smaller, things get easier, and it's a lot faster to get stuff done. So basically, this, um, uh, this lift here just ties off on the end of the yard, through the pulley, down to a blade point. Really easy to do. I've already tied the halyard to the deck with a uh, coil of rope. And now I've just got the big eye needle and I'm threading up through that top pulley and then I'm taking the line across and making a loop so that I can attach it to the end of the yard. And you'll notice here, when I put this loop on the yard, I'll hold the yard with tweezers. So when I'm pulling on any cord, I'm taking away the, um, the, the force of that pull, I'm resisting it, and even there I'm holding holding the yard down with the tweezers while I pull. Every time I'm protecting the model, because if you just pull away at uh, cords, things will snap. Now I seal this with a dob of white wood glue, and this will dry totally clear, and it also shrinks, so it disappears away completely, and it doesn't take long to get tacky so that you can trim things off. Now I'm doing the um, clue line, and I've already run the line up from the deck, as shown in previous videos, through the top pulley block, now I'm taking that down to the bottom corner block, which is also the block that's used for the lifts on the lower sail. And then this is run through, again holding things, putting pressure where I can, so I'm making the least amount of um, bend on the model. And run that now runs through a hole in the top there, which I'd already prepared. You'll have to watch the video on preparing your sails. You'll see I attached all the pulley blocks and I prepared all the lines. Once that's done, I just tension this. Again, not super tight, just so the lines are stiff and straight. And I tension this one until I, it's exactly as I want it. As you see, I'm holding everything I can to stop resistance as I'm tightening those lines. Next thing I'll need are some pulleys, and this is a single pulley with a single line off it that we will use at the end of the braces. Now, if you want to see how to make these pulleys, how to tie them up, you'll have to go back to my previous videos. I've added chapters now, so you can click straight to that section in the video without having to listen to all my waffle. Now, we're also going to need some double pulleys, and these double pulleys will actually sit on the stay line and will help tie our braces into place. So attaching pulleys and getting things ready is very important at this stage. The next thing I'll need is my big eye needle and a long, one metre long piece of cord to run this entire brace. The reason I need such a long length is this arrangement here comes all the way up from the deck and then it goes up through the fighting platform and then it goes across to a pulley block which will be here on this line, this stay line and then it will run up to the yard and it'll use a pulley block like that one below and it will tie, it will loop around there actually and then it loops back to another pulley block which is on 
that stay, which is one close to the sail, and that will come back up to the other side, and there's another poly block on the other side there, of the yard uh, there, comes all the way back to the original double pulley, back down to the fighting platform, and all the way to the deck. Whew! And that, on this kit, is one metre, or just under that, of cordage, alright, of line. It's long, yes, it's very long. But the thing is, it's really an easy line to rig. There's plenty of space here, you can see what you're doing, and once you've run it through all those blocks, you are done. So it's not that hard at all. First thing I need to do is to attach a pulley to each end of that yard of the gallant so that we can do these braces. Now it's just a simple loop again and it's tied off and I'm pulling two bits of string against each other which stops it bending any other direction. Dollop of white wood glue that will hold in place. It's all it needs. It doesn't need any more tying off than that. This is not going to be a very tight line. Next I'll need a double pulley and this is the one that goes pretty well up the top third there of that stay line and this is going to allow a lot of the thread to go back and forth to create the leverage. So that just gets simply tied off with the two lines that I put on it and a dollop of white wood glue and we are good to go. That's about all that one's going to need. Now another double pulley and this goes up the top near that sail which is the gallant for the mainmast. So this one again just gets tied off, very easy to do. So you're just putting a, uh, a line on each side and tying it up. Very easy rigging, plenty of space. This is so much more a joy to do than some of that tight rigging back where the uh, mizzen mast and the mainmast only allowed me to get like one or two fingers in. Here I can get my big fat hand in, as you can see. So that goes in, dot of white wood glue, and that one is set and ready to go. I'll just need to trim off the excess later on. The last block to add is a little single pulley block here and I've already got the loop there on the line that goes over the port side now of that gallant yard and a dollop of white wood glue and we have all the pulleys in place ready for running the line. Now I best trim off the excess because they sort of get in the way if you leave them on there and they only take a few minutes for that white wood glue to coagulate, there's a good word, and, um, and then they basically hold in place. The knots do the work, the glue just kind of seals the deal. And these lovely little scissors that um, Bernard gave me are perfect for the job. At last we are ready to actually run this line. Now I've done the hell out and the loops down below and I'm just running this great big long one metre line all the way through up the space and rigging until I can get to that first pulley block and holding it with my tweezers, I'll run a line through. So I'm working on the port side, so I use the port side hole of the pulley block. So you make sure you don't cross over your blocks and your holes, otherwise you get all mixed up. So that now gets pulled through and then it is run back to the single block up there on the yard. And that single block now is pretty easy to thread. I've already pre-drilled or made sure I pushed a needle through every one of these blocks. Nothing worse than when you go to actually rig and then you can't get the bloody needle through. So I do all that before and I make sure my blocks all will take the thread. I put a fatter needle through with them so the hole has got any chips or gunks or you know wombat piss in there and it's all gone. All right that's through so that's one part of this whole leverage. Now I've got to attach back to that rear double block okay that rear double pulley and through it goes and this is pretty well the entire arrangement for the port side so a lot of lot of thread to pull you've got to make sure it doesn't tangle on anything as you go and I'm holding that block so it's taking all the pressure the tweezers are not my model so there we go that's through and I can give it a little gentle tug and I'm not running it too tight at this stage just basically got it in place and it's ready. So what we need to do now is we need to move to the starboard side okay and on the starboard side of the ship I'm going to reverse the process. So we're at that back block we need to run through, find a space here and yep get it right and then run that up to the single block on the top of that um, Gallant's yard 
Okay, so that's a single block there on a single line. That's run through. Oh, geez, it's like bloody macrame, isn't it? Okay, so you follow me so far? <laughs> I'll be asking questions later. So that goes through there and just make sure it doesn't tangle on anything. Uh, it's actually quite easy. It sort of looks harder on the video, but I really enjoy doing these, um, these braces. And the final thing to do is then that middle or that top third there block. That one, we find the starboard side hole. We run our lovely big eyed needle through. It makes life so much easier when you are doing rigging, I tell you. That does all the work for you. And I'm getting a little bit stuck there, but um, it's just a matter of finding somewhere to put your hands because we're really getting to the point where there's a lot of string. Okay, through it goes. There we go. That line is pretty well run. Now we've just got to find a way to get it through and down and into that fighting platform. So you've just got to work around existing rigging and just have your wits about you. If you make a mistake, it's pretty easy to reverse the um, line with the um, big eye needle. You can point it and poke it back through. I've even had to use the big eye needle to go back through pulleys when I've done the wrong one. So you can correct your mistakes fairly easily. You just take it slowly, take it steady, see how you go. All right, down she goes through the fighting platform and that line will run down to the deck to a belay point and that will be tied off. Now I don't tie it off straight away. What we need to do now is I have loosely run this line. We're now just going to tension it so that it looks nice because it's sort of got some big curves and bumps in it there. So we'll just work from the very first point. Tighten that one, tighten back through, tighten back through, and away we go. There we go, that's all we need. The lines are taut. They've got a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of curve around the pulleys, but that line is not overly tight and pulling on the model. So there it is. Our rigging is complete, and those brace lines have really been the icing on the cake. They've finished it off nicely. Now here, this one is just pulling on that line a little bit. Easy enough to fix. And what you don't want is you don't want that line to bend up. Uh, there's no need for it. Those stay lines, those dark lines, are very strong. And they're, they shouldn't be pulling out of shape. It happens sometimes. Some people build their models and they pull really tight on the, run, the running rigging. Okay, And when they do that, they pull those stay lines completely out of shape. And it looks really weird. It's, <laughs> it's not how it should be. And honestly, you don't need to do it. Your running rigging should always be just taut, a little bit loose, just looking firm. But your stay lines, your stay lines should always be very, very firm. They're the ones that are holding the mast up. They're the ones that hold everything in place. Okay, and I can't emphasize that enough. Those stay lines should be fixed. That's what it is. It's fixed rigging. But your running rigging can be softer. It can have a little bit of slack in it. That's okay. That looks exactly right, and that's how it should be. All right, well, that's it. The bounty is now rigged. Okay, well, that's it, and all I've got to do is add these uh, flags. Oh, dear me. They've put the fault in the flat flag. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work, is it? I mean, what you need is a completely rectangular flag and then you glue it together and fold it to get the furl, wouldn't you? But that is just useless. So I won't be using that. Okay, so basically that's the bounty. She is finished. Look at all that rigging. Now I could have done more. I know it's hard to believe, but there's actually a lot more rigging you can add to a ship. But people don't realize how small this is, right? Here's my hand, okay? Now, here, between those two masks, I can barely get two fingers in to do rigging. And I can only just get my hand in there to rigging. It is tiny. This thing is only about a foot long. Really, yeah. Even though it's 1 100 scale, it's a tiny ship. My victory that I have, which is 1 100 scale, okay? I know this is 1 110, but we'll just use it as a rough estimate, okay? So this is about a foot long, okay? But my victory is about a yard long or a meter, okay? <laughs> In actual, this is 36 centimeters, and I think the victory ends up being 800 um, millimeters, 80 centimeters, right? So, yeah, there's um, same, roughly the same scale, but two completely different ships. So yes, on a victory at this scale, you can put a lot more rigging. You can get your fingers in. You can put a lot more detail. 
but a bounty at this scale, hmm. Now, if you've got a bounty at 150th scale, which I do have, because I have the wooden ship, yeah, I'll be able to do a lot more rigging on that. It's twice as big, and therefore I'm going to have a lot more space to get my fingers in. I could do a lot more lines. I could do bunk lines, and I can do all kinds of things, and, you know, I could do um, all kinds of funny lines. That's all I can say. There are more lines that run forward, more lines that run backward. Enough of that. That's waffling. Although now, you don't have to listen to my waffle because we have chapters. If you haven't noticed, if you're watching on a, on a smart device, I don't know if you'll see them, but if you're looking at this through a browser and you have a look down in the description, there are now chapters and what they have is the time code numbers for each section. So you can jump to, oh, how do I do this? You know, how, how do I tie this knot? Well, you'll find the section and a number beside it. All you have to do is click on that number and it will go to that chapter. You can also scroll through on the top of the screen using the scrubber and it will tell you what each thing is. So the chapter says, this is Harry doing this, this is Harry doing this, this is Harry having a sleep, this is Harry waffling. <laughs> okay, enough of all that. Well, I've been told I'll be too serious on these videos. So I've decided to make a bit of levity on the last one, get away with it. Okay, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for the photos. Okay, the photos are gonna show all that lovely detail on the deck, which you would have seen in previous videos, but now that it's all built up with the rigging, it has, that lovely charm of a model sailing ship. And there's just nothing quite as nice. And in my display cabinet now, I mean, I just sit there and admire it. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased with my work. Now, I can't really turn it around much in this display area because I'm on my maximum angles. God help me if I build a bigger ship. <laughs> I'll need a completely different viewing angle. But there you go. That is the bounty. She is all done and we are finished for this series of videos. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the playlist. If not, go back and watch them all again. <laughs> watch the adverts too. And please comment constructively and um, like and subscribe if you haven't already, because I've got a lot more ships coming and a lot more fun and shenanigans, which is also part of my channel. Okay, There's the serious side and there's the funny side. And somewhere in the middle, that's me. Okay. We'll end this video with a montage of photos so you can see some really crystal clear detail of my bounty. And I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. All right, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.